Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today we're taking a look at the new iOS 16.4 Beta 2. Now we just got this beta after almost two weeks of the release of the Beta 1 and it's actually pretty cool. It has of course more new features and changes and it also has improvements on other ways. So we're going to take a look at this update and see what's new. We have more than 10 new features that we're going to talk about and everything else regarding this update. Now, first of all, let's talk about the size of the update. So if you have beta one installed on your device, beta two should come at around 700 megabytes. That is, of course, always different on which device you're running it on, but it should be somewhere around 700 megabytes. The new build number for iOS 16.4 beta two is 20E5223. This indicates basically that we will probably see another three or maybe even four betas before the release of this update to the public. That is of course always based on the last letter of the build number of each release that Apple does. With the E, I believe we should see at least another three betas before we move ahead and of course get this update released to the public. And from now on, I would actually expect Apple to actually move to a weekly schedule and release a new beta every week before the release of the RC version and then of course the public version of iOS 16.4. Now, before we move on and talk about new features, let's quickly talk about updating because as you probably know with iOS 16.4, Apple is changing the way that you can update your device to the dev beta. You will have to now actually have your Apple ID enrolled into the beta program, into the dev program, which will actually cost you $99 per year. And you that's basically the only way to now on get updates on your device. Even though, as you can see right here, you still will be able to actually install these betas for now. Probably this will change with the release of this software update to the public, or maybe they will push it even further until iOS 17 gets out on the first dev beta, but you can still update as long as you have the profile, but that will change in the future probably very, very soon. And now let's move on and talk about new features and changes you will find on this update. We have more than 10 new ones that we have been able to find until now. One of them is right here under the coverage section that you will find on the about section on the general settings. You know that with beta one, Apple has added a list of your devices right here. So now you won't only see the coverage of your current device, but other devices you have just paired to your Apple ID. And now with beta two, they also have glyphs right here. So it doesn't just say the name. It will also, sh also show you icons here for each device. Now talking about icons, this is something really interesting here. When you go to your iCloud and you go to advanced data protection, the icons here are the same as the ones on Mac OS. They basically have that 3D look on them, which is again, the same as on Mac OS, which actually we have been waiting to see those icons on iOS. They didn't make it until now, maybe with iOS 17, or at least we will have like options to choose those. But these icons have that 3D effect. I know you won't be able to tell from the video, but if you have this update on your device, go ahead, take a look. You will see the messages here, the notes, the photos, the Safari icons, they have the same look as on Mac OS. Another thing, when it comes to advanced data protection, Apple is pushing advanced data protection to more countries now with iOS 16.4. So if on your region you wasn't able to use this feature and you have updated to iOS 16.4, make sure you go ahead and check it out right now. It should be available to a lot more regions. Now this right here is a really interesting change and a very welcome change in my opinion. So if you have bookmarks from Safari added to your home screen, Previously, when you want to open one of them from the home screen, it would actually just open them on Safari. It doesn't matter which browser you're using as your default browser. From now on, when you have changed your default browser, if I change to Chrome here and I have bookmarks that I have added from Safari to the home screen of my device, it will actually just open them on the selected default browser and no longer just go straight to Safari. 
Moving on to the books app, we have a nice change here. So when you go to your books app and you go to themes and settings right here, you will have this new button. If you tap on it, you can choose what you want you do with your pages, whether you want to curl them or slide them like this. So this is the curl one has been added actually with this update. And of course, it's really cool. This used to be on iOS before, but Apple had removed it. And now it's back on the books app with iOS 16.4 beta 2. Now with iOS 16.4, Apple is bringing a lot of updates to the shortcuts app with new actions. And here's one of them, auto answer calls. Well, this will allow you to turn on or off auto answer calls with a shortcut. So you basically search for auto answer calls and you can just choose there where you want to turn them on or off using a certain shortcut that you're creating. Or if you go here, you can just choose toggle and then of course, it will do basically when it's on you run the shortcut it turns it off when it's off you run the shortcut it turns it on this is a really really nice addition to the shortcuts app there is also a new smaller change here on the settings app when you go to brightness display and brightness and you go to the always on display this right here used to be at the top now it's at the bottom and it will also actually show some text there it says when always on this when always on display is off your screen will turn off when iphone is locked basically just an explanation of what it does but nothing major here they just have switched the places of the toggles on the always on display settings a change on iOS 16.4 beta 2 that I don't like is that when you're actually recording a screen recording on your iPhone, you won't be able to actually hide this on the screen recording anymore. This used to be very, very nice with previous iOS versions. So you're basically tap to, to actually record your screen, you swipe there and you hide the countdown and everything. So it looks much, much better and cleaner. Now you won't be able to actually do it. A lot of updates are being made with the music app as well. Some little nice tweaks that will make this app way better. And one of them is the waveform here. It has been tweaked with beta 2 again, and now it's actually much, much better. And it will just correspond with the music that is playing on the background. Now just not just show some random waves. Another great thing iOS 16.4 is bringing is Apple Pay to Korea. So if you live in Korea, you don't have Apple Pay, well, it's rolling out with iOS 16.4. And here we have also a couple of new splash screens with iOS 16.4. The first one will be for the podcast app, basically showing an explanation of the features that Apple has added to the podcast app with iOS 16.4, channels and library, improved up next and also carplay updates we have another one here for the stocks app market data business news iphone ipad and mac you can use this of course anywhere while using your icloud account so these are two new splash screens that i was able to find with ios 16.4 beta 2. And now let's move on and talk about performance. So here we have the latest results from Geekbench 6 for iOS 16.4 beta 2. Now the single core score came out at 2524 while it was 2516 on beta 1. So a slight improvement there. You can also see an improvement here on the multi-core score 6463 with beta 2 6396 it was on beta 1 which is again a very very nice improvement so what's next for ios 16.4 well i would expect apple to actually move on to a weekly schedule from now on so i would actually expect them to release a third beta on march 7th as i said we will probably see another three betas probably right here somewhere around the end of the march we will see an rc version and then probably the last week of march or first week of april we might see this update getting released to the public which is again an amazing update with a lot of new features and changes that will make ios 16 much much better so that is it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed the video go ahead and leave a like if you did of course don't forget to subscribe for more videos and i will see you on the next one